What's up, y'all? It's Nate Almighty, and today I bring you the Willie Bosket Jr. story. Now, Willie Bosket is a guy from Harlem whose book I read about when I was in Rikers Island myself, and this is definitely a heartbreaking story. You have to watch this video to the end so you truly understand how this guy never had a fair shake at life. From young, he's seen his mother get abused. Up until the age of 10, he was seriously and violently abused by his grandfather, and he just never had a fair shake at life. And over time, that developed him into having a savage mindset. He was one of the first youths charged with being an adult in New York City. You know, they invented a law just for him. And also, this is somebody who is regarded as the most violent inmate in New York prison history and not for what you would think, which would be attacking fellow inmates, but for the savagery he displayed towards police officers, corrections officers, as how he tried to kill several of them. So now, currently today, he is secluded in his own cell, a special kind of cell where he doesn't have access to anyone. This is a tragic tale. You're going to have to watch this video all the way to the end to truly understand what this brother went through. So without further ado, I bring you the Willie Bosket Jr. story. William Bosket Jr., born December 9th, 1962, is an American convicted murderer whose numerous crimes committed while he was still a minor led to a change in New York State law. Okay, so that juveniles as young as 13 could be tried as an adult for murder and would face the same penalties. And by the way, I'm getting this off Wikipedia. He has been in either prison or reformative, reformatories, which is basically like a, uh, like a uh, juvie, but the kind of juvie where you're not necessarily in prison, right? For all but 18 months since 1971 and has spent all but 100 days of his adult life in custody. He is currently serving a sentence of 82 years to life at Five Points Correctional Facility. So this also counts as a New York State prison story, okay? Now, let's get into the early life of Mr. Willie Boskin, okay? I have remember reading this book around the time where I was um, being enlightened when I was on Rikers Island, and it's just crazy how everything comes to full circle. And now I can use this story as inspiration to the youth. But let's keep going with early life. Now, some of this stuff is real tragic and real traumatic, you know what I'm saying, for anyone. So be prepared, okay? Now, it says, Bosco was born in Harlem. His father, Willie Sr., Butch, killed two people in a Milwaukee pawn shop shortly after his son was conceived and was sentenced to life in prison, where he earned a degree in computer science and psychology. Butch was released from prison and went on to get a job as a computer programmer for an aerospace company, but was charged with the crime. He shot his girlfriend and committed suicide to avoid being caught. Now look, um, as you can see, when we allow ourselves to be involved in, in, in the criminal justice system on the bad end of it. You can clearly see how it affects our children because later on, you're going to see how the young Willie Bosket was inspired by his father to be the type of man who he was for the simple fact that he didn't know nothing better. And you're also gonna see how um, environmental circumstances and the harm you cause the children, right? Will come back and affect the world. You know, for those of us who remember Tupac, he had this thing called Thug Life, which was the hate you give little infants, everyone. But let's keep going. Bosket had a traumatic childhood. When his grandfather was released from prison, he hit Willie many times. When he was nine years old, his grandfather had him perform to teach him about girls. So, as you can see, and I'm sure those of us who will admit, or maybe we know people, um, a lot of people who resort to crime or promiscuity, um, they have been um, assaulted in some way or form 
varying degrees as children. Now, as it says here, Bosket's own grandfather, okay? Multiple times within the first 10 years of his life, okay? His grandfather was a predator, okay? So that lets you know that before he got to his grandfather, he probably did it to his own son. And what's worse than that, there's probably even longer um, line where somebody did something to Willie Boskett's own grandfather. Because all of this is learned behavior. Nobody wakes up and says, hey, listen, um, I want to do this to a child. This is all learned behavior. But let's continue. His mother, Laura, had different living boyfriends who beat her. And as a boy, Bosket often jumped in to defend her. And one incident hitting a man with a pipe and slashing him with a knife. And then another threatening, I'm going to burn this mother up. He also suffered a head injury when he ran out into the street and was hit by a car. This was all before young Willie Bosket was 10 years old. Now this is straight up tragedy. Not to mention just the fact that he was assaulted by his grandfather and he lived in a fatherless home with different men in and out. Um, he also suffered a traumatic head injury at 10 years old. And if you're like me and you like documentaries and researching things on like serial killers and stuff like that, a lot of times some of these people had head injuries at a young age. And um, some research is said to show that tra traumatic head injuries lead to erratic behavior. Um, um, a lot of that similarly, similarly is compared to um, that thing that football players get when they hit their head too many times. But let's keep going. When he was nine years old, his mother, heeding advice, petitioned him to be placed in the center, stating that he was a person in need of supervision. He was placed at the Children's Center in Manhattan, but escaped and quickly ended up in Spofford, which was a secure detention center and a child's equivalent to an adult doing time in Attica State Prison. He would be in and out of detention centers and reformatories except for a short time when he turned 21 and had served out his time for murder, okay? Now, now, um, as you can see, this is already a real tragic story and, um, and you could almost, you could say that he was basically done before he even hit puberty due to all these circumstances. Like this is a Rikers Island story, a juvenile story, and a New York State prison story, being that he touched all places. I've been to Spofford. It's definitely a youth version of Attica, okay? But let's get into more details. Now we're gonna get into the subway murders, which led to the new law passed in New York, okay? On March 1978, Bosket, then 15 years old, shot and killed Noel Perez on a train operating on the New York City subways, three train during an attempted robbery near the Harlem 148th Street Terminal Station. Eight days later, Bosket and another accomplice shot dead another man, Moses Perez, unrelated to the first victim, and another attempted robbery at the back of another three train at the 145th Street Station, okay? Now, as you can see, the young boy was poor, and really, he was looking for money, right? But he was robbing people. And those of us who are familiar with robberies, you know a robbery could turn into a homicide case, and it led to this young boy being a serial killer, okay? Now, Bosco was tried for murders in New York City's family court. At the trial, as the trial was underway, Bosco surprised his own lawyer by pleading guilty to both murders. He was sentenced to a maximum of five years in the Goshen Youth Facility. Although prosecutors tried to get a longer sentence, five years was the most they could get under the law at that time, okay? Now, the short length of Bosco's sentence caused a public outcry, okay? Um, the governor had opposed efforts by his opponents in that year's election, right, to have juveniles tried as adults for certain crimes. However, after reading a report on Bosque's sentence, um, it was called to state legislator into special session to pass the Juvenile Offender Act of 1978. Under the act, 
Children as young as 13 years old could be tried as an adult in court for crimes such as murder and receive the same penalties as adults, okay? So look, subse subsequent crimes, and now we are gonna get into, what I wanna get into is what he was doing when he was in prison, right? So look, so look, right? A year after he began serving his sentence for the two murders, Bosket escaped from the youth facility. He was caught after two hours, tried as an adult for the escape and sentenced to four years in state prison. He was returned to the Division of Youth in 79 and was released in 83. After 100 days, he was arrested when a man living in his apartment complex claimed Bosket had robbed and assaulted him. Then, while awaiting trial on that crime, Bosket assaulted several court officers. He was found guilty of attempted assault for the dispute in the apartment and sentenced to seven years in prison. At this point, his escape from the youth facility nearly came back to haunt him. He was 16 years old at the time, meaning he was now considered an adult for criminal purposes. In New York, escaping a correctional facility is a felony even if the, even if the facility is a youth facility. If he had been convicted of assaulting the court officers, it would have been his third felony conviction. Under New York's habitual offender law, he was facing an automatic sentence of 25 years to life. However, it was acquitted. As you can see, going into this man's late teens and early 20s, he was already marked and he was already very troubled. You know what I'm saying? Um, convinced he would die in prison, Bosket took out his rage on correction officers, getting into numerous altercations. Arrested for one of those incidents, he was convicted of assault and arson and sentenced to 25 years to life. In 1989, he was sentenced to an additional 25 years to life sentence for stabbing corrections officer Earl Porter at the maximum security uh, Shawangunk Security Facility Never heard of that one And I'm from New York After the 1988 assault Bosco was transferred to Woodburn Correctional Facility Where in April 1989 He drew a third 25 year sentence For assaulting a correction officer With a chain All three sentences are consecutive His earliest possible release date Is September 16, 2062 When he will be 100 years old all but assuring that he will die in prison, okay? Um, he's always been in solitary confinement. And, you know, that's basically the end of his story. And they say that he's in five point right now. Um, what I want everyone to get from this analysis is, is that nobody is perfect. No one is perfect parents. We don't live in a perfect world. But, um... We got to protect our children the best we can, you know. Um, my sons don't live with me. And being that I know what kind of spooky world we live in, I honestly, I worry about my children every single day. You know, um, even with their moms, you know. Um, you know, um, it's just a real scary situation, you know. Because earlier in the story, you can see that Willie Boskin's father was a very intelligent man. And it's safe to say that that same level of intelligence would have been transferred to his son. And if 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 the circumstances were different, Willie Bossy could have very well went to an Ivy League school. He could have very well been a CEO or just a, a lawyer or somebody of a significant importance, some kind of leader amongst men, especially in the black community, you know? So um, I feel like Children are not born um, murderers. Children are not born to be serial killers. It's a simple thing of nature versus nurture, you know? This is one child of many who wasn't loved properly, wasn't protected properly, and the government is there to do so many things, but it always seems that the kids, especially the kids from colored families, <laughs> 